Hey, Bastish BF for 64K, and welcome to another video special. Penguin Software Adventure Collection Special. And welcome back to today's special. We're going to be having a look at four different graphic text adventure games made by a bit of an obscure company called Penguin Software. But before we start diving into these games, let's take a brief look at the company that made them. Penguin Software was formed in 1978 in Geneva, Illinois in the USA by Mark Palzarski. It had multiple names before settling on Penguin Software in 1981. They were known initially for producing graphics programs and development tools for avid game makers, which led to 1982's extremely successful The Graphics Magician, a program allowing anyone to develop animation and graphics for arcade-style games and adventure games. They soon received an influx of graphic text adventure games made using partially their own programs. Some of these were bought and polished up and published through the company. Transylvania, one of their most popular games was a prime example of this. They also understood that making the same game and publishing it across multiple systems was important from a financial point of view, and went about developing a specific program called Comprehend that was flexible enough to allow the same language to be used across all computers at the same time, saving them money on remaking each game for each different system, and this system would be exclusively used for their graphic text adventure games. They ran into a major hurdle though in the mid 80s with Penguin Books laying a lawsuit down on them for copyright infringement, which had to do with the company name. They decided not to risk a lengthy legal battle and rebranded as Poloware, which all the C64 games we're going to have a look at here today were published under. The company was bought out then multiple times between 1987 and 88, before ending its run in 1990, with the final installment of their Transylvania series, Part 3, being their last game released. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. And now that we know a little bit more about Penguin slash Poloware, let me introduce the four games we're going to look at today. First up is The Quest, released in 1983. Transylvania was released in 1984, and the sequel hit the C64 in 1985 called Crimson Crown. And finally we'll look at Utapos, a remake of an early 80s release, and that came out in 1986. And now let's start looking at these games in chronological order. The first game we'll be looking at is The Quest, originally released on the Apple II in 1983, with the C64 port debuting in 1984. This was one of the few products to come out of the graphics magician endeavor. Programmer Dallas Snell submitted the completed game he and a few friends had made using the program, and Mark and team loved it. They in turn purchased the game, polished it up, and toned down some of the more adult humor of the game, and it became one of the first commercial releases of outside programmers collaborating with a company. The game's story involves the kingdom of Balima, who's been terrorized by a destructive dragon rampaging through the land. In typical fantasy tradition. The king tasks his most loyal barbarian, a warrior named Gorn, with killing the dragon. The catch is, Gorn is pretty stupid, to say the least. So the king sends you, one of his advisors, to go with Gorn to help him out. This also proves to be one of the game's most unique features, especially for a graphics text adventure game. You don't really perform tasks yourself, generally speaking, but order Gorn to perform them, as you're pretty weak and he's very strong. This leads to a very interesting dynamic in the puzzle solving and the way things play out. The game has a lot of other unique features. The fact that you have to constantly be mindful of your water supply and fill up every time you come across say a river or a waterfall for example because water equals life. Being able to string full sentences together is also done quite well. Just separate the tasks with commas, ands and thens. For example pick up the sword and stab the goblin. For a game from 1983 it was pretty flexible in design with you being able to make much more complicated sentences than 
that. The game was also pretty large with 200 location and employs a very non-linear gameplay style, allowing you to go and explore freely and had multiple ways to complete it, with you even being able to skip entire portions of the game if you knew what to do, which in turn encourages replays, which is not something really associated with the genre. It's interesting that Dennis Snell himself ended up working at Origin Systems only a few years later as a software producer. His name is all over their most beloved classics, everything from Times of Law to Wing Commander 3 and everything in between. A lot of the quest's unique features would also pop up in Origin System games, which I found quite fascinating. Another interesting fact is that Ring Quest, the sequel, which unfortunately did not get a C64 release, was published through both Penguin themselves and Origin Systems in 1985, marking Dallas's first release with that new company. But I'll finish off this look of the quest with a quote from a popular gaming magazine called Softline about the game. It looks like Penguin Software has really done it. Adventure game with beautiful high-res graphics, a great plot and sneaky surprises. Also in 1984, the C64 got an enhanced and expanded version of Transylvania. The original version debuted in 1982 on the Apple II, another example of the graphics magician and rookie programmers coming together. The game was originally written by Antonio Antiochia as a text-only game on the Apple II. This version was sent to Penguin. They loved its design and Mark sent Antonio a free copy of the graphics magician, which he used to enhance the game to its full graphic text status. It was then published by the company. The C64 version and others were all converted using their Comprehend program and further enhanced for their new releases. Transylvania puts you in the role of an adventurer who takes up the quest to rescue Princess Sabrina, who's been trapped in a coffin in a castle tower in Transylvania. The problem is, she hasn't got long to live and will die by dawn, giving the game a very strict time limit to complete, which ups the ante as soon as you start. Like the quest, it employs some unique aspects for this style of game at that time. The most important one is that you've been constantly hunted by a werewolf. He's always on your tail, so choices and directions all become way more thought out than your usual game of this type, or at least until you find a silver bullet and a gun that is. The game has a really bizarre mix of this horror tone and lots of bizarre humor, with characters encountered like goblins, witches, and even a vampire. The situations you find yourself in are quite hilarious, and the ways to overcome the puzzles quite inventive. But I'll refrain from spoiling the fun. This is easily my favorite of their games, hands down, and from a financial point of view, is Penguin's most successful game they ever released. Antonio would go on to oversee the entire trilogy of games, with the third installment, as we saw earlier, being there quite poetically, final release as a company. And we'll stop here just for a quick second. I've actually made a tutorial video on how to play these games, graphic text adventures or just plain text adventure games if you've never played them before. I'll leave a link in the description and you can link to that and check it out if you want to get more information about them. And there'll also be a link at the end of the video to go straight to that video. And now over to 1985 with the sequel to Transylvania called The Crimson Crown the second Comprehend game, but the first to be written from the ground up using that system. The C64 and Apple II versions were the originals, with many others following in 1986. It's a much bigger game than the first, as seen by this nifty pack and map, and the chaos of the princesses about to die is gone, allowing you to take your time leisurely to explore the vast land without being hunted by that dodgy werewolf. The story goes, the king has mysteriously died, and his crown which holds many magical secrets has has been stolen by the vampire lord Dracul, who intends to unlock its powers and take over the land. The game employs the quest's unique approach of having a party of characters at your disposal, with the princess Sabrina from the first game, who can now perform magic, and Prince Eric, also along for the ride, who can use and manipulate objects that only royalty can use. It therefore makes the puzzles a little bit more complicated in a way, with so many possible options and solutions. Therefore it is a harder game to get to grips with than Transylvania. Having said that, the land is really big and fun to explore, the weird riddles around every corner, and the humor are all over the place, and the dark atmospheric graphics really make it intriguing to see what's going to happen next. And once you get used to using your sidekick abilities, the game does become much easier to understand and solve, but unless you are an actual veteran of the genre, it may be a little bit too difficult to get to grips with. Still, it's a really excellent sequel, but definitely made for the more seasoned adventurer out there. 
And the final game for today was Utopos, which is another Comprehend game, their third release, and a remake of a 1981 Apple II text-only game published by Sentient. The game was originally written by legend Michael Berlin, creator and co-writer of Test Times and Tone Town, one of my favorite adventure games ever, and a game we looked at at the previous Interplay episode. Michael Palzowski and Berlin had known each other for a number of years through the industry, and Palzowski asked Berlin if he could remake Utapos with the Comprehend engine for a new audience, and thus in 1986 the new version hit the stores, now with graphics and a much easier world layout and extra puzzles. The game, unlike everything else we've looked at today so far, is a science fiction adventure game, with your character being a spaceship pilot carrying some important cargo headed back for Earth. You get ambushed by a bunch of space pirates and are forced to land on the planet Utapos, where you are immediately apprehended by a bunch of aliens and thrown in jail. Your overall goal of the game is to escape from the facility, locate and retrieve the cargo, and escape off the planet in your ship. All sounds way easier than it really is. This game is probably, because it was originally designed in 1981, much more straightforward in design. Atom found have really obvious uses and the trick of this game is really comes down to mapping out the area as you'll want to go through here as quickly as humanly possible because as soon as you bust out of prison the alarm goes off and you've been hunted by a bunch of aliens much like the werewolf in Transylvania. The biggest difference here is that you don't really die you just get captured and thrown back in jail which is basically a soft reset of the game so you can slowly groundhog day your way through the game bit by bit. For me overall it's the least engaging of the bunch with the others I just felt had a lot more atmosphere and variety. It's still quite a good adventure game, but I'd definitely try the others first, as they just have a little bit more personality and gameplay to their design. And that's it, I hope you enjoyed the show, this look back at these old graphic text adventure games. Please check out the first episode where I check out a whole bunch of games made by Interplay on the C64. Thanks for joining me, Bastish B at 64K. I hope you had a good time. And if you can please like and subscribe, that'll be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.